Michelangelo and Raphael were both incredibly talented artists throughout our entire art history. Although they are known as some of the most influential artists of the Renaissance period, they held an undeniable rivalry. Once Raphael jumped into the scene in Renaissance Italy in 1504, he quickly gained the preference of Pope Julius II, who asked him to paint a fresco in the Pope's private library in the Vatican Palace. He beat out competitors such as Michelangelo and Leonardo for the top spot of fame and art favor. Michelangelo really did not take this competition well and was completely envious of Raphael. Michelangelo was known as a grumpy and short-tempered man. He always had a negative attitude and some even say he fractured his nose when he was little and it never healed properly, which caused him to lash out on people in times of pain as well. Michelangelo is most famously known for his painting on the ceiling fresco in the Sistine Chapel. The Sistine Chapel painting had great symbolic meanings for the papacy as the chief used for great ceremonies, such as electing and inaugurating new popes. The ceiling of the Sistine Chapel had plenty of different scenes throughout the entire ceiling that ranged from the sides and on top. Although Michelangelo saw himself more and referred to himself as a sculptor. His famous sculptures include David, which was a gigantic 17-foot statue carved out of marble. The statue reflected courage, humanism, and characteristics that are valued, especially during the Renaissance era. He made this in 1501 for the Cathedral of Florence. Michelangelo regularly denied that anyone influenced him, but Leonardo was a part of influencing his works. The Holy Family was most likely asked for him to be painted for the birth of the first child of Agnolo and Maddalena Doni. This was particularly innovative painting that would later be influential in the development of early Florentine mannerism. Additionally, one of his other most famous paintings is called The Last Judgment, which shows Jesus coming down from heaven on a cloud and he is surrounded by men and women, all of who are trying to go with him, but some are shown falling to the bottom, which would be considered them falling to hell. This painting was put on the walls of the Sistine Chapel, and it stretched largely across it as well. <coughs> On the other hand, Raphael was known as a people's person and a ladies' man, which opened up many opportunities for his paintings and widened up his fame and popularity. Not only did he master the signature techniques of high Renaissance arts, like the perspective, precise anatomical correctiveness, authentic emotionality and expression, he also incorporated his individual styles which included rich color, effortless composition, and clarity that was distinctly his own at the time. The serene qualities of Raphael's paintings were known as some of the highest models of the humanism at this time. This had many people wonder and think about a man's importance in the world through artwork that emphasized the supreme beauty. Some of his most famous pieces included the Marriage of the Virgin in 1504. This use of vibrant colors and emotional expressions added a graceful demeanor to the painting that made the blessing of the painting represent a deeper meaning to many people. Also, the Disputation of the Holy Sacrament in 1510 represents theology and shows the occupants of a Catholic church underneath the span of heaven above the sacred altar. Religious figures are seen in this painting such as Christ, the Virgin Mary, John the Baptist, God, Moses, and plenty more. Lastly, the School of Athens, which was completed in 1509 to 1511, 
The gestures philosophers depicted in the fresco have been subject to considerable academic interpretation and debate. It's important is in the way that Raphael has gathered all the most famous classical philosophers within a beautifully painted Renaissance building, the architecture of which points to Bramante's designs for the new St. Peter's Basilica. The painting included philosophers such as Aristotle, Pythagoras, Euclid, and more. Raphael did not take this competition with Michelangelo and other artists at his time as seriously as his rival Michelangelo did. He wasn't quite as bitter about the entire thing, and it is said that his painting of the portrait of the face of philosopher Heraclitus leaning against a block of marble. Heraclitus is often called the weeping philosopher due to the sad nature of the philosophical doctrine which falls in line with Michelangelo's reputation as a childish man who whined and cried a lot when things didn't go in his favor. Following his death, Raphael's movement toward mannerism influenced painting styles in Italy's advancing Baroque period. This celebrated for the balanced and harmonious compositions of his Madonna's portraits, frescoes, and architecture. Raphael continues to be widely regarded as a leading artistic figure of Italian high Renaissance classicism. And this is an example of one of his Madonna's portraits. Raphael died unexpectedly on his 37th birthday. After he passed, the rivalry did not die with him and Michelangelo. Michelangelo is said to have made public statements about Raphael copying much of his style and said that he learned what he knew from him. It is true that Michelangelo had some influence on Raphael, but so did other Renaissance artists like da Vinci at the time. Raphael never stole ideas from Michelangelo, which he was accused of by him. This was more of just bitter accusing, accusations. Overall, they were both great artists of the Italy Renaissance. Both held very religious and humanism along with mannerism influences on their work. They both received great admiration by the people. All of their works held stories or influences on the people just by looking at the art as well. Websites I used included biography.com slash people slash Raphael, www.thearthistory.org slash artist Raphael life and legacy, 100swallows.wordpress.com, newsartnet.com slash artworld, and greatest art rivalries.